On today's program, I'm with Rika Erdbrink. She's the manager of the Grand Hyatt Hotel in Hong Kong. Rika, welcome to our program. How are you today? Thank you so much. I'm very, very good. Very nice to see you today. Yeah, so Hong Kong, that's one place I've never been to. Uh, I'm starting my day and you're ending yours, I believe. Yes, correct. Um, it's already 8 p.m. here. I think 7 a.m. for you. <laughs> yeah, 7 or 8, something like that. So, uh, yes. but, but, uh, but it's good to talk to you today and uh, you. get to know you and your hotel and what you folks have done with the GBAC Star Accreditation Program. But tell us yes. about yourself, your position with Hyatt Hotels, your look, you know, some highlights of your facility if you'd like to share. Um, yes, my pleasure. So, um, yes, as you mentioned, I'm the hotel manager of Grand Hyatt Hong Kong. Um, the hotel is actually located in um, Wan Chai District on Hong Kong Island. Uh, we have 542 beautiful guest rooms, um, 11 restaurants and a bar. Um, we also have a residential spa in our hotel and um, 22 venues for um, catering and events um, business. So it's a, it's a rather large um, uh, property that uh, we're operating here. So yeah, as my role as um, hotel manager of the property, I take care of the overall operations and um, make sure that um, everything runs smooth. Um, the role has drastically changed over the last, um, um, I would say, almost yes, nine months here. Um, since um, COVID started much earlier in, in, in this part of the world. So we've had to make a lot of adjustments and rearrange our operations and um, adapt to um, the changes that came our way. Uh, our way. So Hong Kong um, has gone through uh, several waves of um, the pandemic already. So we're just at the end of the third wave um, with a lot of restrictions, a lot of protocols um, requested by the government. Um, but yeah, our hotel remained open um, throughout the time, um, obviously with um, uh, no international travelers as um, Hong Kong um, is closed and only Hong Kong residents um, can enter. But we have a great uh, local community here in Hong Kong. So the uh, roughly 7.5 million people, they're great supporters of um, um, our hotel and of course, obviously other, other businesses as well. But um, we've been able to, to maintain um, a relatively okay business here with um, our food and beverage um, offerings and then um, something that is very very popular nowadays are the staycations so um, a lot of um, um, yeah a lot of Hong Kong residents come and spend uh, 24 hours um, in our beautiful hotel. Well I'm sure it is beautiful and from how you describe it it sounds like a nice venue. Tell us about your work with Hyatt beyond your own hotel. Okay um, so actually, um, also throughout this, um, this pandemic, um, Hyatt has put a lot of um, focus on, on hygiene and well-being um, of associates as well as, um, as our guests. So um, we, we, we have done a lot of um, uh, brainstorming and um, Hyatt thinking sessions of, of what we can do um, to enhance um, the customer experience and the colleague experience. Um, so we were, Grand Hyatt Hong Kong was part of a pilot um, project for, for hygiene standards that were implemented uh, throughout the region in, in Asia Pacific. And then um, also we um, were the, um, in the starting point of the hygiene and well-being um, uh, leadership. So every higher property um, throughout Asia Pacific and also the rest of the world has now appointed a hygiene and well-being leader. So I'm this hygiene and well-being leader. And uh, we were also tasked to um, go through a, a trial session and um, to, to help to facilitate the kickoff, kickoff of this um, GBEC Star Accreditation um, Program. Um, so it was a very, very interesting um, process that um, we've gone through. Um, I believe it started first in the US with um, a couple of hotels, but then um, an international um, view was also required. So we, we joined um, a little bit later um, to give some feedback and some comments because obviously the US is um, handling things in a slightly different way than maybe a hotel in Hong Kong or in um, Tokyo or in Beijing or Singapore. Um, so we, we were helping to, to, to set up the, um, the checklist in a way um, that they easily you know, understood um, and um, also colleagues um, um, yeah, in other parts of, of, of this region were able to, um, to understand what it's actually about. So you've been a busy person, it sounds like. 
Yes, very busy. Um, <laughs> we, um, um, we, we definitely were going through a lot of um, daily or almost week, well, not daily, but weekly changes with the, mm. um, the local government. Um, I mean, this is also one part of, um, um, or one point of the, the, the GBEC um, accreditation, right? So you, you look at the local um, government guidelines and, and what is requested. So it's actually a constant update. So every week, there's some news that um, uh, you know we have to follow, some restrictions being lifted or some restrictions being put back in place. So uh, yeah, we kind of keep shifting of um, um, yeah, keep shifting the tasks that that are required. Sure, sure. Uh, tell tell me this. So what what does GBAC Star accreditation mean for your staff and visitors? What do you hear them talking about? So as I mentioned earlier, our region was. Um, um, one of the first um, regions to be to be hit with COVID-19, right? So we, we were impacted by this and, and we had to make a change. So I can say that um, our hotel, um, like Grand Hyatt Hong Kong, we've always had a lot of focus on, on, on hygiene and, and, and well-being. Um, we're also an ISO um, Financial Thousand Certified Hotel, which was always a focus on food safety, but not the overall um, um, safety and, uh, and so on of the hotel. So we've... Um, we, We've really tried to change that that mindset because this is what people knew about. So, so GBAC is something that was not well known in this um, this part of the world or this region. So, obviously, there's a lot of question: What is it? What does it do? Um, you know, what is your commitment? What is your promise? So, so us as a team, um, we actually um, we've done training sessions with our team. So. Um, as I mentioned before, we have this hygiene and well-being um, committee in the hotel. So that's, that consists of different um, departments and, and, and divisions within the hotel. So we've done internal training for people to understand what it actually is. And we have reiterated that a lot of the things we're already doing. But then for our customers and our guests, um, we, we are introducing um, what we actually do and what, what does it mean for them and how can we ensure their uh, personal well-being and, 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 and safety, right? Um, so we've here have done uh, actually quite a lot of um, social media posts, um, um, you know, we're, we're displaying it uh, to make sure that people actually get to know what it is. So it becomes a talking point. And um, um, it's really important for us that, that we're able to enhance our business and, and, and operational practices with this and, and really um, reassure our guests that um, Grand Hyatt Hong Kong is, is a safe place to go to and that we're taking you know all measures um, very serious and um, looking at the implementation in a proper way. Now the program calls for 20 elements for you to research, study, and implement. Yes. Do any of those stand out as challenging or maybe you've already doing some of them? So actually, you know, when we when we first um, joined the um, um, the program, right, and and we we, we received the, the general um, the task list of the twenty points, we looked at it and we're like, oh my god, and there's a lot of things we need to do, and okay, let's go point by point, and then as we you know started to read more and get more into the details, we realized, oh, actually, a lot of this we are doing already. Maybe we call it differently, or we don't do it in the area that it was described in. Um, you know, we, we really um, we, we really looked at it in a different way, and um, our team or our committee is um, um, actually consisting of people from food and beverage, culinary, uh, learning, housekeeping, spa, um, security. So we have all these um, different departments there. And um, when we when we started to discuss as a group, um, we realized not everyone knew what the other part was actually doing and how some of these tasks in this list actually overlap. And um, so it was a great way to, to consolidate actually what we already have in place and put it in a proper program. And I think also the accountability and um, you know, making commitments as a team of what we want to achieve um, also helped a lot um, because otherwise it's usually one department does that, so you focus on this you focus on that, you focus on that. But then now we actually brought it all together. And um, as, as a team can, can go back and revisit, we can do our audits and um, we can really learn from it and um, make the team also stronger. And I know that all these um, division heads or, or team members from, from those departments went back and it's like, oh, I learned this today and I didn't know that we had that in place. And, actually what FMB is doing, um, we could implement in housekeeping. So it was really, um, it was such a great exchange that we never realized there was a need for. 
So I think um, this also for our team members um, showed that we're really looking out for them, you know, and really trying to, 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 to put things into, um, into place for them. And then, you know, emergency preparedness and um, the um, response measures, everyone plays a part. Um, but to actually put it together point by point again and, and reevaluate what we had and then also based on this pandemic, which is something obviously wasn't in our emergency response plan previously, right? Had to be added and evaluated and, and, and yeah, really looked at and, you know, demonstrating the appropriate cleaning and um, disinfection procedures is, is something we do and you just you take it for granted you think oh we're doing it but then when you really study it um you know there could be more checks there could be more follow-ups um there could be different checklists implemented to really ensure that's happening um i mean granite hong kong has been um we're celebrating our 31st um, anniversary uh in november so it's actually i mean it's a legacy hotel in this this region and um in this city so a lot of things work like clockwise. So now the clock stopped. So, you know, we had to reset it and, and, and look at a lot of things in a different way. And this really helped to do that. Very nice. Uh, so everyone knows what everyone else is doing and everything's documented and all that. <laughs> no, yeah, correct. Everything is documented and it shows also the, um, it reflects from our team members because our team members are also much more confident when guests ask questions because guests really ask a lot more questions nowadays than they have in the past. In the past, people would just come, you know, check in as quickly as possible, go to the room and, and, and you know, if you're a tourist or a business person, it doesn't matter, but the, the needs were different. So when people now check in, there's a lot of questions. You know, how do you clean? How do you disinfect? What's the frequency? Um, you know, things we, we never really had to, to worry about in the past. So by doing all of this and um, documenting it in this um, in this um, twenty step um, program, that really helped because it trained the people on how to answer as well and reassuring our. Yeah, we will be questioned, and now you have the answers to provide, so that's good. I have one yes. final question. So, yes. if, if another hotel, a venue similar to yours, or someone who's a manager as you are, were to ask yeah. Rika, should we do the GBACSR accreditation? What would you say? Oh, I would absolutely recommend it because I think a lot of organizations are looking for like a proper process on consolidating, you know, everything that they've done and, and really finding a way to talk to the customers and talking to, um, to their own employees. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be a hotel, but any other big organization um, um, in, in, in Hong Kong. So all these practices, the, the, the business practices, operational practices, um, it makes sense to reevaluate and, and look at it and really put it in a proper um, format um, to really make sure that you can go back, you can be held accountable, um, you can make your commitments. And it's, it's a very structured approach that, that helps you to, to align um, um, yeah, with everything. So I think... Um, I was actually very happy when we when we were approached to to implement something like that because it just helped us as an organization or as a hotel um, to make sure that we all know what's actually happening and um, making sure that our team members and um, and guests are okay. So Hyatt has a has a very big focus as I said before. So our purpose is uh, we care for people so they that, so that they can be their best. Um, and I think. Um, it underlines it because we really care. We're looking for alternatives. We're looking for uh, reassurance. Um, we're looking for, for training material. I mean, there's a lot of training material also that um, that GBA provides and, and, and gives us the opportunity to look at and, and to share with our team members. So I think um, um, it's definitely highly recommended for anyone to do. Well, thank you, Rika, for your time today. You're more than welcome. Yeah.